Okay, so the usual response I get when I tell people that I'm working with termites is, great, we need to find new and better ways to kill them. So then I normally have to explain that I'm actually working on how they can be useful to us in the environment. But people are hesitant to believe that because of the stigma associated with termites. But termites are cool. Whenever I started this research, I was kind of hesitant, but I've been converted, and today hopefully I can convert some of you all as well. So one of the cool things about termites and the subject of my research is that termites have a symbiotic relationship with their gut bacteria, the Cynobacter candeli, that allows them to biodegrade phenols. So because phenols are naturally occurring through termites breaking down wood, their gut bacteria are naturally able to break them down further. So what are phenols and why do we care about their breakdown? So phenols are these toxic compounds that are used as industri in industrial settings to preparation reagents and also in hospitals as antibacterial agents and in throat sprays. They're pretty common and you can find them pretty much anywhere. So phenols are toxic and harmful to the environment, so if ever there was a spill in the coastal area, it could mean trouble for us. So my experiments aim to assess the viability of using a system natural to this area to biodegrade phenol into something harmless. So to set up my experiment, so what I did was I made the standardized media with the only source of food for the bacteria being phenol, and then I varied the phenol concentration. As you can see in trial one, I had a little bit of phenol, in trial five, I had a lot of phenol. So then I inoculated, or I put in bacteria into the media, and it was a standard amount, and I measured growth using optical density. So in this first graph in the top right, you can see that as phenol concentration increases, bacterial growth also increases. This makes sense. There's more food for the bacteria, there should be more growth. But right around 600, in between 600 and 700 milligrams per liter, there's a threshold at which point in time the phenol is too toxic for the bacteria to handle, and they all die off. In my second graph, I show that at low concentrations of phenol, growth starts immediately. But at higher concentrations of phenol, such as the 600 milligram per liter series shown in low, yellow, growth didn't start until 264 hours of the experiment. So there's delayed growth. So finally, what both of these graphs show is that the Acinobacter tandoi is able to biodegrade this phenol, use it for growth, and make it into something harmless that won't hurt the environment. So in conclusion of my experiment, a bacteria isolated from the termite gut is a viable source for biodegradation of moderately contaminated sites for phenol, up to 700 milligrams per liter. A Cinebacter tandoi is able to biodegrade phenol concentrations of up to 700 milligrams per liter. Higher concentrations of phenol create longer periods of time before bacterial growth starts. And finally, bacteria, termites, and their bacteria are cool, they're worth studying for reasons other than killing them, and biodegradation of phenol using that method was successful. Thank you.